So, good afternoon. Um, thank you for your time. I know it's quite uh, a heavy after lunch. <laughs> we have a 50-minute talk. So, today I'm, we're going to talk about uh, Kubernetes networking with SRV6 and ContiPPP. It's another way to think about Kubernetes networking. Um, my name is Ahmed Abdel Salam. I work for Cisco Systems. I have with me Rasto, who works for uh, Pantheon, and I have Merip, who works for uh, Intel. And this is going to be a joint talk. So our agenda for today, we will go very briefly on Kubernetes networking. Fortunately, we have two talks before, so this part was, was covered. And we will talk about SRV6, some introduction to the technology, and also how it can work with Kubernetes networking. And um, Rasto will uh, cover the Kunti VPP part, and Merrick will go um, into the, ex the acceleration of SRV6 using the Intel uh, uh, SmartNIC. So Kubernetes networking, just in one slide, so Kubernetes doesn't do anything for networking. It basically offloads this uh, function to uh, CNI plugins. And those CNI plugins are supposed to do two main functions. The first one is connectivity. So when you create uh, a new Kubernetes uh, pod, um, the job of the CNI plugin is basically to create a kind, uh, some interface inside the pod, connect this interface to uh, the network fabric can be either vSwitch or whatever, and allocate an IP address to this uh, pod. The second functionality is to make this pod reachable through, uh, through the cluster. So CNI plugin needs to do just these two things, different technologies and different ways to do it. And for the IP addressing, Basically, all your Kubernetes pods need IB, IB addresses. And unfortunately, we don't have enough IBV4 addresses anymore in Europe. This uh, was a talk in RIB78 uh, where they projected when they expect the IBV4 addresses to be exhausted. And actually, in Europe, it was supposed to, uh, to finish by January 2020, but three months uh, before, uh, they announced the, uh, they already assigned the last uh, prefix. So we don't have uh, any IBV4 anymore in Europe. Some, some service provider they do have, but RIBE who assigned the IBV4 address, they don't have any more. So the solution for this is to use IBV6. So in, we are covering three main problem statements. Some people might not agree with the problem statement. Some people might not agree with our solution, but this is at least the problem statement and the solution from our point of view. And the second problem, when we use IBV6 for, for container, for addressing, uh, giving address to Kubernetes pods, we will need to, to implement all of the use cases of, of Kubernetes, like bot-to-bot -bot communication, network policy, services, service chaining, ingress, and uh, communication between clusters. And the, the question is that, do we need to, to do um, these use cases in IBV6 the same way we do it in IBV4, or should we think about them in a more IBV6 native way? And from our point of view, that SRV6, I will explain what is SRV6 later, can provide a solution for this problem statement. The third one is, is uh, the I.O. For, for, the, for the pod. Some, some kind of workload, they need the very fast I.O. You need to have a lot, your, um, your pods are required to, pro, to process like a lot of packets per second. So how would you, how would you provide this, uh, this I.O. To, uh, to, uh, to the Kubernetes pods? You have several options in the data plane. You can use the kernel forwarding. You can use something like EPPF with XCDP. You can use something like VBP with DBDK. And from our point of view, Again, for this, we think that VPP is a solution for that, or you can have also some way, depends on your, your use case, you can have a kind of accelerated way to use, uh, uh, to use VPP. And on the right, I show some numbers of some comparison between the, the forwarding of the, um, of the Linux kernel compared to VPP, and in the second diagram is that VPP, when you use it as a soft, in software, or when you offload it to a smart NIC. So what is SRV6? Uh, SRV6 basically is a source routing mechanism. So you define the, you define the path or the, the forwarding path of the packet at the source. 
how you do it, you, in, you attach to, uh, to the packet a list of an instruction or a list of endpoints that, that needs to process this packet. These endpoints, we call them segments or, um, or SRV6 segment. And each segment should have a segment ID. And segment, uh, uh, segments ha can have two different meanings. One, one meaning can be a topological segment, like going to node one or two or three before reaching the destination. Or it can have like a service meaning or NFV meaning by going to function one or service uh, network function one and two and three before, before, uh, before reaching the destination. And what SRV6 can provide you, first is scalability. Since you, you push the packet pass at the source, you basically remove all of the states in you, uh, from the fabric of your networking. And with the SRV6, you can eliminate some of the protocol you already, you, you already use, like for traffic engineering use cases, if you need to traffic engineer inside your network fabric, for some use cases like service chaining and for overlay. And it gives you end-to-end -end connectivity. It has, segment routing has two implementation, basically one for the MPLS data plane, and we will not go in, in this direction, uh, which basically maps the, this uh, segment identifier to MPLS label. The second one is uh, for the IBV6 data plane, where each segment is mapped as an IBV6 address, and you insert, you add to, to, to the packet uh, a routing extension header that carries a list of this, uh, of, this inst uh, of this IBV6 addresses. Before explaining how it works, this is, this is for the ecosystem. So SRV6 has a, has a very rich ecosystem. So when you decide to implement SRV6, you basically you are not in your own. So you have, you have support from network vendor, uh, from nat network equipment manufacturer, you have support in Smartnik, you have in Merchant Silicon, you have an open source, and you have some NFV uh, uh, as well. So SRV6 is defined basically as an RFC, um, as a draft in the IETF, and basically it defines what is a network, uh, uh, SRV6 network programming. The SRV6 network programming is a model where you encode in the packet the processing bus. And we, as we said, this will be implemented as a number of segments. Just to, to give more details, what is an SRV6 segment or a SID is basically an IBV6 address, which, which divided in two parts. The first is the locator, which node should process the packet, and the second one is the function, which, which function I should, I should execute in the packet uh, at this node. And here, how your packet looks like. So you get your normal payload, can be IBV4, IBV6, TCP, UDP, whatever, and then you encapsulate this packet into an IBV6 encapsulation. And in this IBV6 encapsulation, you carry a list of, of segments that basically define the path of the packet. And each node, when processes this packet, it will update the destination address with the next node that should process the packet. So here I have, um, I, need, I need the packet before reaching the destination to go through three nodes uh, in, inside, the, inside the network uh, or inside my Kubernetes cluster. So it will, I will encode the, the IDs for this node. And, the, and every time I process the packet, I just update the active segment pointer to be the next segment and which be carried in the destination address of the packet. And this is how the segment routing header is defined in the IETF. So basically, it has some common, common uh, fields as any routing extension header, plus the SID list or the path of the packet, which encoded as IBV6 addresses. And there are two, way, two, two main types of, of behavior that, that you can, that you can do, execute in the packet. The first one, what we call the head end, is this is where you do the encapsulation. So you have two flavors. Either you want to, to do layer two networking, so you encode the, the layer two frame inside the SRV6 encapsulation, or you do layer three by encoding uh, the IBV4 or uh, the IBV6 traffic. And the other behaviors, this one, these are the one you execute on the, on the node defined in the packet header for several use cases. Some use cases like traffic engineering, some for, for, for just overlay if you need to connect to Kubernetes uh, uh, worker nodes and some other for service chaining. 
and this is just, I will give two examples. One is for overlay. So I have considered this green overlay as, your, as two Kubernetes pods. So they need to speak to each other through the network fabric. So this is a Kubernetes node, and, and the other one is another, on another Kubernetes node. So basically, you encapsulate, you encapsulate the packet into SRV6 encapsulation. But for some use cases, someone might need to do some traffic engineering inside, inside the fabric. So you get your Kubernetes node con co connected to, uh, to a data center fabric. And in this data center fabric, there are some, some I need to take a, a faster bus to go to, to the other node or a low latency bus. So you can enforce this kind of bus by adding a new segment to, to, um, to this. So the, fast, the, the low latency bus here is not the one from directly from one to two, but if you go one, three, two, this is a low latency bus. So you can enforce this also inside the fabric. Just, I will, I will do uh, two slides on the Kubernetes with REST RV6, and then I will, uh, I will hand it to, uh, to Rasto to speak about uh, the support of SRV6 in, in, um, in, uh, in Contiv VPP. So what you have now for, uh, for Kubernetes networking is basically for each, when you, when you want to implement load balancing or IE Kubernetes service, you, s you rely on some feature in the Linux kernel like the, like the Linux IP tables net, or if you use a CNI plugin that uses VPP in the data plane, you, you, do, you use the VPP net engine. The same for port forwarding for the network policy. As mentioned in, in the previous talks, people use the Linux IP table firewalls or people using VPP, they use the VPP ACLs. For overlay, you get different protocol like VXLAN, IP and IP. Each CNI plugin support one protocol or another. And for some, some, some use cases, for example, for service provider when they want to do some service chaining between the pods, um, it's, it's the way they do it, they create different tunnel and they try to stitch these tunnels uh, together. And the result of this model that you get kind of net everywhere, you get also a quite complex network policy uh, model, which basically relies on the container IPs and the containers in Kubernetes or the pods, they come and go very fast. So every time you create a new, co uh, a new pod, you need to update the IP table rules uh, across uh, all, um, all nodes. Plus IP tables, as people mentioned before, was not, was not designed for this very fast uh, forwarding. Service chaining is, is complex, I would say almost, almost impossible to, to do currently. And for some uh, use cases, like if you want to implement some inter-cluster communication, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, or if you want to implement a kind of network-wide policy, I mean, I, I, myself, I don't know the solution. So if someone knows, can tell me. So how we think SRV6 can simplify this? The way we think about it is just one technology that you can use it to implement at least most of your use cases, because it has the instructions for that. So you want to implement an overlay, SRV6 provides you the, 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 um, the instructions to the, encap and the encapsulation and the decapsulation. If you want to implement a policy model that doesn't rely based in, on the container, the IBs, you can leverage some of the metadata in the encapsulation to, to implement the policy using labels. Some use cases like port forwarding, um, by assigning some an IPv6 address to each to each application, there was some good slides on, from Facebook on this, but I forget to add the, the link. And uh, for load balancing, you get what we call se uh, segment routing policy, which you can have a multiple backends, which basically does this without without having uh, to do net. And service chaining. You get service chaining out of the box because you have an extension header where you can encode the bus of the packet. So you don't need to create several tunnels and try to stitch them. You can encode the bus of the packet from the beginning. And for the other use cases, you can leverage the SRV6 and um, uh, some control plane like uh, network service mesh. I will just cover one, one use case is the network policy. If you want to, network, to implement a network policy on a scale, 
that basically does not rely on containers I, uh, in container IBs. So here just these two parts, the blue part is, is, your, is, you, is within your Kubernetes node, and this green part is, is across, uh, across the, your, your data center uh, fabric. So we, we will use, so I have two containers, so I have, I have my, my, uh, my Kubernetes cluster is implementing uh, workload from several tenants or from several uh, application tiers, and I want to implement a policy between those, uh, those different groups. So the way I will do it, I will encode. I don't want. Uh, I don't want to implement it based on the container IB because this way, every time I create a new container on this node, I have to go to all of the other nodes and update the IB table rules or the actual there in order to block the traffic. So that I need to have a kind of a common identity to each container or to each group, and based on this identity, I can filter the traffic. So the way we do it. Here, when you do the SRV6 encapsulation to, to send the packet across the fabric from one, uh, from one Kubernetes to another, you, inco you encode the, the, source, the source of the packet. So this packet that comes from, from, the, from the pod R1 are coming, is coming from the, the, um, the group red. And when you, when you do, you remove the encapsulation at the, at the other node before, before uh, handing the packet to, to the other container or the other Kubernetes pod, basically you compare the source group of the packet to the, source, to the destination group or the group of the destination uh, um, of destination. So what this gives you better than, than, uh, than the IB table rules or the, f the normal firewall rules, basically, you get a scalable uh, uh, network policy because now your policy does not rely uh, anymore on the container IB. So my policy table will, all, will, all, will only have some uh, rules based on the group. So I have uh, group red. Um, when group red wants to speak to group blue, I accept the traffic. But when group red wants to speak to group green, I drop this traffic. Say I, I, have, I added a different Kubernetes node and I added different uh, new pods from group red or group green, my policy table will not change because each packet will come with, uh, with, uh, with the label or already identified and I will, I will just uh, filter based on this. Second is, is integrated inside your, your overlay. So you don't need to implement a new technology to do, um, to do policy. You don't need to use uh, a new firewall to do the policy. The policy is already implemented inside, inside your overlay. The second, the third is independent of the container IPs because basically it relies on the groups uh, of, the, of the containers. And with this, I will hand it to, uh, to Rasto to speak about the SRV6 in Contig. Yeah, thanks, Ahmed. Uh, yeah, so before I go into uh, SRV6 in Conti VPPC and I, I would just uh, tell you some details about uh, Conti VPP. So Conti VPP is yet another CNI, uh, but this one uses uh, VPP uh, as its data plane, uh, leverages DPDK to access the network interface, uh, and ha has uh, the Kube proxy fully implemented on VPP for network policies and services as well. Uh, it is production ready, passes all Kubernetes conformance tests, uh, so you can use it as any other CNI. Uh, but apart from that, it is uh, really good for uh, different cloud-native networking uh, deployments, uh, meaning uh, if you want to deploy some network functionality as a set of microservices running uh, in Kubernetes. Uh, for those, we have uh, features like uh, we allow multiple network interfaces uh, per, per each pod, uh, and actually different kinds of interfaces. Uh, uh, we we uh, have support for multiple isolated networks, L2 or L3. Uh, we do have support for service chaining between the pods uh, for CNF deployments. And of course, since we are here because of SRV6, uh, we, we support IPv6 and have some uh, SRVC, uh, SRV6 uh, features implemented. Uh, very briefly, the look at the, da at the data plane. So uh, on each Kubernetes node, uh, we run uh, one uh, vSwitch pod, uh, which, uh, which executes VPP. Uh, VPP uses DPDK to, to access the network uh, interface, which interconnects uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, the, the node with other nodes in the cluster. 
and between VPP and the pods, uh, we have the interfaces. By default, you would get tab interfaces from VPP into the uh, network namespaces of uh, the individual pods. Uh, between the nodes, we by default use uh, VXLAN tunnels, uh, and we'll see uh, what we can do with SRV6 instead. Uh, this is one of the uh, one of the features uh, that Contiu VPP implements for uh, CNF deployments. Uh, so let's say we have two two uh, CNF pods, which need to talk between each other. Let's say on L2 level, uh, so they can have a first uh, network interface connected to the def default pod network, and they can have additional network interfaces connected to additional networks. Uh, the way uh, you define this in ContiVPP is uh, that uh, in order to, to connect multiple interfaces interfaces towards the pod, uh, you used ContiVPP annotation custom if uh, where you where you ta where where you uh, where you can define the name of the interface in the pod, a type of the interface, and uh, the network where you have where you want to have it connected. The types that we support currently is the tab interface uh, between VPP and the pod, then uh, VIT interface and MEMIF. MEMIF is, uh, uh, is a memory interface uh, which can be used in case that the CNF supports that and it allows to forward the packet between the vSwitch VPP and the CNF uh, through the shared memory, so bypassing the kernel. This is uh, another use case uh, of uh, CNF deployments. Uh, in this case, uh, we again have mul uh, pods with multiple interfaces. In this case, they are MEMIF uh, interfaces. And we want to have uh, them connected uh, in a chain. So we want to have a chain uh, which starts in, a, in pod CNF1, goes through the pod CNF2, and ends uh, in the pod CNF3. Uh, those pods can can be running on any node in the in the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so once you define this kind of service function, as shown on the right side of the slide, uh, you you just refer to the pod labels as in Kubernetes services. Uh, then you refer to to a uh, uh, name of the interface uh, which you have given uh, in the pod spec, and uh, you, you basically define the service chain as an ordered list of uh, these pods and their interfaces. Uh, this, is an, uh, this is an implementation which uses uh, auto cross connects to create the chain. So th the chain in this case is uh, uh, L2 based, uh, uh, based on cross connects on the same uh, VPP vSwitch uh, instance or cross connects between the VXLAN tunnel and the interfaces when, when we need to go multi-node. Uh, we'll see again later what uh, we can do uh, for the same use case with SRV6. Uh, and this is just, uh, just an extension of the previous case uh, uh, to show that you can chain uh, the, the interfaces not only between the pods, but you can also chain with uh, some external DPDK interfaces or sub-interfaces. Okay, let's go on SRV6. So by default, uh, if you deploy uh, Conti VPP CNI, you have uh, IPv4 networking. Uh, you can switch that to IPv6, and then you can optionally uh, enable SRV6. And uh, once you enable SRV6 uh, in, IP in IPv6 deployment, uh, what you get uh, by default automatically is that instead of the VXLAN uh, tunnel overlay between the nodes, uh, you would get an overlay with SRV6. So whenever a, a pod on the node one needs to communicate to the, the pod uh, on the node two, uh, the, 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 the packet is steered into an SRV6, uh, SRV6 policy based on the destination IP subnet of that node. Uh, the SRV6 policy would have uh, a an, uh, an segment list uh, which would contain just one segment which identifies the, the other node where the packet needs to traverse. Between the nodes, uh, you, uh, the packet is encapsulated with SRV6 header. Uh, when it comes to, to proper, uh, proper node, uh, it is decapsulated in the, uh, in the DT6 uh, local set function, which does the SRV6 decapsulation and table lookup in IPv6 table, and then uh, forwards the packet uh, towards the destination pod. 
the other thing that you can uh, optionally enable uh, in uh, in Conti VPP if you have SRV6 deployment is uh, Kubernetes services implementation with SRV6. So uh, for IPv4, we implement Kubernetes services as uh, most of the CNIs using the network address translation and load balancing uh, after NAT. Uh, with SRV6, we can actually get rid of the network address translation. And the way we do it is that uh, whenever a pod needs to talk to a service, which is actually a, a, a set of backend pods that, that act as a, as a backends for the service, uh, we want to somehow load balance between, between the pods. And uh, with SRV6, uh, we again, uh, let's say let's say that pod one wants to communicate uh, with some uh, service endpoint, and in this case, the service endpoint can be either pod two on the same node or the pod two on the other node. Uh, so so let's say we have a cluster IP uh, Kubernetes service, so it is a virtual IP address. Uh, when the when the packet from the pod one comes to the VPP, uh, we steer. Uh, that packet into an SRV6 policy based on the destination IP address, cluster IP. And then uh, the SRV6 policy in this particular case would have uh, two segment lists. One would uh, would be path towards the pod two on the same node, and the other segment list would be the path towards the pod two on the other node. And we basically load balance between those two segment lists. Uh, in case of uh, the same node, uh, the segment list would have just one segment inside of it, and that would be the local seat uh, with, with decapsulation of SRV6 and cross-connect towards the uh, pod 2 interface. In case if, it's all, if it is load balanced to the other segment list, uh, that one would have uh, two segments in the list. The first segment would, uh, would uh, uh, local seat end, shown on the node 2. And the other one would uh, would uh, uh, forward the node towards the the pod two uh, interface. And the third thing that uh, we can do with SRV six is uh, service chaining. So I've I've shown the service chaining based on cross connects, and this is a uh, another way of doing that uh, with SRV six. Uh, we. We implement only snake-based uh, uh, service chains, so uh, whenever a traffic needs to traverse through multiple CNFs, we always need to go uh, to VPP and then to the other CNF. We cannot go directly. Uh, that is the limitation of Conti VPP's uh, CNI currently. Uh, and whenever you want to use SRV6 for service chaining, you use the exactly same APIs as I have shown for the L2 Cross Connect service chain. So how it works with SRV6? Uh, so let's say that uh, this is our uh, our chain that we want to achieve. So we we want to have one CNF pod, uh, which would act as input. Whenever a packet comes out of that CNF, we want uh, that packet to go to CNF one pod, from there to CNF two pod, and from there to CNF output pod. Uh, how it is rendered into network configuration uh, with SRV6 in Conti VPP is this. So uh, first we steer the packet uh, based on, let's say, destination IP into an SRV6 policy, uh, which in this case would be a little bit more complex. Uh, it would contain uh, a single segment list with multiple segments. Each segment does its, its job in, uh, in uh, this path. So the first one is uh, the, the local seat AD, which pretty much uh, takes out an SRV6 header from the packet, forwards that to the, to the CNF1 pod, uh, and when the packet comes back from the CNF1, it, it puts the SRV6 header back uh, uh, to the packet, and then it goes to the next uh, segment, which would... Uh, which would uh, uh, which would uh, uh, let the packet traverse to the proper node. That would be the local seat uh, end on the node two. And from there, it goes to another uh, local seat AD. Uh, again, there, there is decapsulation from, the, from an SRV6. Uh, the packet goes to CNF2. When it comes back, again, encapsulation and goes to the next uh, segment in the list, which would be eventually uh, the local seat uh, DX6, which just 
uh, forwards uh, uh, the decapsulated packet uh, to the CNF output. Uh, one nice thing that we can do with SRV6 rendering of service chains and cannot do with cross-connects is that we can have a multi-path uh, multi uh, rendering of chain. So in case that we have multiple pods that, uh, that uh, match the pod selection criteria defined in the SFC, SFC API definition, uh, we can create multiple chains uh, and load balance between them. And of course, uh, all of these works, uh, even even uh, on multi-node, even if none of the uh, CNFs runs on that particular node, uh, if CNF uh, out input three would be the input pod, uh, the, the traffic is steered into an SRV6 policy and from there it goes to the proper node with uh, CNF1 and or CNF11 one, one, one or 1.2 and then the rest of the chain. Everything works dynamically, so, so if you uh, let's say shut down one of the nodes, the CNF would uh, reschedule on a different node and the, uh, the, the forwarding through the chain still, still works. Okay, this would be it. So, thanks. And now we take a look at uh, how, we can, how we can accelerate SRV6 with SmartMix. Uh, okay, uh, can you hear me? The microphone works. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, I want to talk here something about the accelerator. This conference is mostly about the software, but I want to talk something about how we can use the hardware to making software uh, working uh, uh, faster, yes, and making our uh, implementing faster, yes. <clears throat> Uh, this January, I visited our spiritual home, uh, the Computer History Museum in Mountain View. Uh, that uh, we fa I found uh, the first network card, yes, uh, what was created over the world, yes. So it is like on this picture, yes. Maybe it is not clear. And uh, I use this one to explain uh, what is the our accelerator with the FPGA, which is exactly this, uh, which is that uh, hardware making exactly some function like this first card. Yes, we connecting here the network interfaces and we trying to push some traffic to the host. Yes, it is just the. Uh, and our accelerators can make the multiple functions and by default it behaves like this card, yes, it's doing nothing, uh, but with this accelerator we can do uh, some uh, more complex things, yes. Uh, why we should do uh, some mm, more complex things, yes? Uh, because, for example, our colleagues from Cisco is implementing that uh, a lot of the new protocols, yes, uh, which provides uh, <coughs> some bottlenecks uh, to the hardware processing. Uh, Ahmed explained us uh, that uh, how looks like uh, the SRV6 and uh, normally when we have the normal card without any acceleration, uh, this network card, uh, uh, this network card should be uh, should do all the packet processing going through the, for example, parsing of the headers, making the decision of the headers. With every header, we should make the forwarding decision. We should make a lookup, next lookup, next lookup, next lookup. Yes, it is. Uh, when we want to do work, uh, make this on the server la uh, layer, it is that quite complex, uh, even for the very good software like the VPP is doing, yes. Uh, and uh, it is the reason to including the accelerators, yes. Uh, we have, uh, in our models, uh, we have here the model when we're making that uh, some connection of the uh, two VNFs or the two uh, containers, yes, uh, through the VPP, when uh, we want to uh, accelerate or want to process the RS RS R uh, segment routing traffic faster, yes. And uh, the problem with the packet processing is uh, that the, because of the number of the lookups, what we are doing inside of the software, the less packets means uh, less packets uh, or the shorter packets means more problem and have more impact on the performance, yes. Of course, uh, when we are using only the video traffic or we, uh, for example, streaming only the YouTube or some, it is not a big problem. Uh, but for example, when we are going to the uh, world of the IoT or the shorter packet of the voice, it's still that uh, this problem of the packet processing is going to, to be b uh, bigger and bigger problem. 
uh, what we are doing uh, in this operation is this picture presents uh, how we are working without the accelerators. Yes, it is just the inside of the cart. Uh, we are doing not accelerators, so all the SRV6 processing is do doing in the VPP router. Yes. Uh, and uh, it is nothing more. Our cart accelerator works like the normal NIC card. Uh, yes, it is nothing happens uh, here. Uh, in the accelerated model, uh, we have exactly the same model, but we pushing the part of the acceleration. I don't say that we pushing everything. Yes, the FPGA and the hardware accelerators in this model is not the, for example, uh, model which can do everything. Yes. Uh, that we still we are making the accelerator and this accelerator still working with the VPP router, but the sense of the acceleration is to make the job of the VPP router, software VPP router, faster. Yes, uh, to limit number of the lookups. Yes, inside of the hardware. Uh, and additional problem what we solving with this model, uh, not connecting the VM or the uh, VNF or the container directly to the FPGA in this model, is to management. Yes, we uh, our cart in this model or our FPGA is hidden inside of the VPP. So from the user point of view, whatever software we are using for the managing, like the Conti VPP, which is the very good example, it is invisible uh, to this software. Yes, uh, to the user. Yes. Uh, we are uh, accelerating the VPP or some function of the VPP, uh, not, the, uh, uh, not the overall data path, yes. Uh, it also, uh, in our models, our FPGAs today are quite limited in the space, and of course, we couldn't put all the internet here in the FPGA, and it also helped us to limit our acceleration to the, uh, um, to the model. Uh, where is really necessary yes? uh, to, to limit the functionality, what is really necessary and the most uh, useful. Uh, what we are achieving uh, that way, yes. Uh, here is some pictures uh, of, uh, which presents uh, that what we can achieve. Uh, this line, uh, which is that uh, in the gray one, uh, is the way uh, how we are working, uh, what we are can achieve with the pure software, yes, without the acceleration, yes. We could see that the overall path or the overall performance we can achieve uh, because the uh, number of the lookups and the complexity of the processing includes the complexity in the packet processing at uh, to make a processing efficient we should m use the many many cores yes you see that for example to achieving the 36 gigabytes for the 192 uh, bytes packets uh, uh, we ne need to use the uh, 12 cores yes Intel CPUs uh, have the, for example, the 28 cores, and it is not very efficient way to work that to use the 12 cores uh, to uh, from the 28 to make just the packet processing, yes, and nothing more, yes. It is just for the infrastructure, yes. With our accelerator, we can limit, we can achieve uh, the uh, four uh, using the four cores 44 gigabits, or with the six cores 50 gigabits, yes. And everything, all more cores, uh, all, uh, and we are freeing uh, more cores to the uh, uh, to the users. Yes, so user can use efficiently uh, to make uh, our cores, CPU cores, uh, to making the processing faster. Yes, so making it much more efficiently, having the same flexibility what is delivered with the SRV6 and the VPP. Uh, here, this picture presents uh, the more example what we are doing, and uh, we can achieve, for example, uh, saving uh, eight to ten cores. Yes, uh, by uh, this one. Yes. Uh, Intel, unfortunately, do not provide this operation uh, or this solution directly. We are working with our partner HCL, uh, which is the company from India, who is our partner, uh, who delivering and testing the solution for our end customer. What the Intel is really doing, Intel delivering the hardware, yes. So, uh, which can uh, we can do this uh, this operation, a service X, and many many other examples, yes, of the acceleration, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So, again, thanks, uh, Rasto, and thanks, Merik. So, um, just uh, to conclude, as we say, like Kubernetes does not provide any solution to to networking. 
you need to uh, to pick your CNI plugins that you will use to do the networking, and uh, CNI plugins, as we said, like they provide two main function in Kubernetes: the connectivity and the reachability. And we need IPv6 to provide uh, um, IPs for these containers or Kubernetes pods. And we believe that SRV6, by leveraging the IPv6 data plane, can handle various uh, Kubernetes use cases in a more simple and scala uh, scalable way. And we give in this talk two examples of SRV6 support, uh, both in ContiVPP to do uh, as a CNI plugin, and also accelerating um, uh, the, the SRV6 uh, processing using the smart NICs in order to free uh, let's say more cores in your uh, servers for for application workload. And with this, uh, thank you. And ready to uh, for any questions. So, how much do you, how much does SRV6 add to the actual packet header? Because I saw some I, I saw some annotation. I know there's an earlier slide we got a minus six byte header. Is that is that accurate? Is that accurate? No, actually, it was this one, 192. It was this was the side of the size of the packet. So, if you speak about the SRV6 encapsulation, so basically it depends on the use case. So, if I go back to the overlay, you actually need to repeat the question. So <laughs> for, the, for the AV, you need to repeat the question. Ah, okay. So, so the question was how much uh, of overhead SRV6 add to the packet. Um, uh, how, m how much bytes uh, SRV6 needs uh, as an overhead uh, added to the packet. So for, the no for, for most of the use cases, when you want to, to do just overlay, basically it's just an IPv6 uh, outer header. So it's the same as uh, IP and IP encapsulation. So you add just IPv6. If you want to implement some more advanced use cases like, um, like traffic engineering, for example, when you need to send the packet through several nodes. So in this case, you will need to have an SRV6 uh, header as well. And, and based on how many, how many, how many nodes you need, to, need to, to process a packet. How many bytes does each node add? Uh, well, actually, it's not. It's, not, it's, it's how, many, how many nodes you need to address in the past. So I'm sending traffic from X to Y through one, two, three. So you need to add a, a segment for, for, each, for each node. Okay, well, each segment, how many as, an, as an IPv6 address, because the nodes are IPv6 addresses. Okay. Each segment has a 16-byte yeah. header for size. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think about this encapsulation, uh, the question was more how much of the original packet, if it goes out of container, do you preserve the Ethernet header or do you preserve the original IP header? Well, it, it also depends here in use case. So there are two two uh, two um, two ways to encapsulate the traffic. So if you need to implement some layer two services, you can uh, you can encapsulate the whole layer two frame inside the packet. But if you need to do just uh, uh, layer three services or kind of layer three VPN, so basically you can include you can encapsulate the um, uh, just the layer three traffic, uh, either IPv4 or IPv6. Uh, SRV6 defines uh, different models for the application of the container, which is the SRV6 aware, and it is the SRV6 not aware. Yes. So when there is the SRV6 not aware, uh, the hardware of the VPP just the strip the VPP uh, the SRV6 header, and when the packet is sent out, it adds it again. So the um, the tunnel of the SRV6 tunnel is not visible uh, to the uh, VN uh, to the application. Yes. Uh, what, for example, when the application is the SRV6 aware, it can achieve, uh, receive the, all the packets with the, all, the, uh, uh, all the encapsulation. Yes. It is depending uh, what the option here is the, uh, added here. Yes, it's used uh, configured in the uh, routing table yes, of the VPP. Yeah, the, for, for the last three, for the last three uh, operations, so ba basically when you implement service chain, so you can have your, your, your network function or CNF are SRV6 aware, so they can process and, and skip this encapsulation and process the packet. Say you have a firewall that needs to apply some rules on the original packet. So either the firewall is aware of the encapsulation and can apply the rule directly, or it's unaware, and in this case, you need to strip out the, the encapsulation, and this is where the, the Intel card can do it at a higher uh, processing rate. Uh, 
time is out. So I, I will take it offline. Repeat the question. I, I can repeat the question. Oh, sorry. So basically, the question was if the application is, uh, is SRV6 unaware, and um, uh, will, will, will there be a way or, or a layer between the application and the network that handles the encapsulation? That's true. So, it, so if your application is not aware of the SRV6 encapsulation, there are three different ways of doing this kind of proxy between the application and, uh, and, and the infrastructure. But if your application is aware, we'll, we'll process it directly. One more question, and that's it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so there was, there was some discussion recently that, that Cisco was, had proposed a bunch of non-standard SRV6 extensions that Linux had not yet implemented. Does this all work with the standard tags that are, or does it require some of the special extensions? Well, I'm, I'm not sure which, which part exactly are you referring to, but from, from the slide here, all of this, uh, at least, all, um, at, uh, 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 up to here, all of this behavior are supported in, in, the, in the Linux kernel. Okay. So uh, for the proxy behavior are implemented currently as a Linux kernel module. 